Wrath of the Machine is still one of my favorite raids ever in Destiny 2. And it looks very likely that that is going to be the reprise raid that comes back next season. If you've never tried to raid, or if you happen to not own Destiny 1, then in this guide, I'm gonna go over a quick refresher on how the raid works, how the mechanics work. Some of that will change in Destiny 2, but based on what we've seen the other raids, the reprise raids, a lot of it will remain the same. The first boss is Vosik, and he'll be split between two encounters, Vosik Phase 1 and Vosik Phase 2. In Vosik Phase 1, you'll be in the huge area that's in the Plague Lands. You notice as you come in, that obviously you're coming in the middle, and there's an area on the right and there on the left. The way you can tell that are these little, looks like almost circles that are in the ground, and there are these little spinners above them. Again, on the right, middle, and left. Those areas are where the bombs come out that you're gonna to need to use for Vosik. So split up into three groups of two, one right, one middle, and one left. One person is gonna be a runner, I'll get into that in a second, and the other person is going to defend the area. The primary thing you're defending against are their shanks that'll come, and they actually take charges that you need to get to the damage phase for the boss. To get to that damage phase, one thing that you'll notice is that there are glowing arc orbs situated different parts of the arena. You'll need to pick those up. That's the runner's job. The runner will need to keep going around and picking up those arc charges until they get four of them. Once you get that, you'll go back to where you started and put them in. You'll notice that the area looks very much like the Scourge of the Past banks that you had during that encounter. Again, very, very similar because it's a fallen raid. Couple things to note here. It's really good if the runners, if they possibly can't, so they don't cause problems with each other to stay to their areas to get their charges because you could potentially take a charge from someone that needs it desperately because there's a timer. If you don't get the charges within a set amount of time, you will die. If you get more than four charges without banking them, you will die. You'll continue to do that for a while and then you'll notice that that meter increments until it gets all the way to the top. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you let the shanks get close to those meters, they will take some of the charges away, which will cause problems. But if you keep doing that, what you'll notice is then balls will start dropping from the spinners. You'll take those balls and you'll throw them at the boss's shields. One thing to keep in mind is if you throw them around the same time, it actually will take off more of the shield quicker. But take the shield off and then you can do damage. Damage for this encounter, again, in Destiny 1, you can continue to use balls, but typically I'll use something like Gallahorn or Sleeper. Gallahorn's good because it's really good to get some of the adds, but Sleeper works really well here. Typically, depending on how good you are, you're gonna need to do this for a couple phases. And then at that point, Vosik will get to a certain point of his health bar, he'll disappear, and you continue through the raid. In Vosik phase two, you're gonna face many of the same encounters, but with a little bit of a twist. You're gonna get into a room. Again, everyone's gonna divide up into three groups of two with different roles in this case. One person's gonna primarily stay on ad clear, and for that person, make sure you have something that can take down a big enemy quickly because you'll have to deal with captains and things like that. The second person's gonna be throwing bombs, very similar to what you did in the first encounter. The other thing you'll notice is that there are some monitors at the back of the room that are all the way across. They're either right, middle, or left, top, or bottom. We'll talk about those in a little bit too. So as you start the encounter, again, everyone's divided up in their groups of two, you'll start killing ads. During this time, the ad clearer is obviously gonna be dealing with the ads. You'll be dealing with the ads too if you're a bomb thrower. And then there'll be a captain that comes out you wanna take out as quickly as possible. During this portion of the encounter, a bomb will show up on each side's middle, right and left. The three bomb people are gonna pick up their bombs and one thing they're gonna to wanna to do is they're gonna to wanna to coordinate when they hit the boss's shield. So depending on where you're located at, just time your throws. So typically we, we count down three, two, one, throw, and then we throw them. If you do it all at the same time, you take a significantly larger portion of his shields down, which gets you to your DPS phase. Not too long after this, after you do that the first time, you're gonna notice then, you're gonna hear audio cue and one of the monitors is gonna light up. Again, it's gonna be right, middle, or left, top, or bottom. It's very important that you call that out because if you can't kill the one on your side, you're gonna need help from other people. If that lights up and you take too long trying to complete it, you will wipe the fire team. Next, you'll continue the same activity over and over again to take the boss's shields down. One thing to keep in mind, when you take the boss's shield down, you'll tell because it's getting lower and lower and lower. You'll notice that there's like a aura that shows up from the boss. And that's when you know it'll be DPS phase. For DPS, what we typically do is we all collapse in the middle, we use a bubble in the back, and we use sleepers to take the boss out as quickly as possible. The other thing is two balls will drop down, which you need for challenge mode, which we're not talking about here. 
And you, but in this case, you can actually throw this at the boss for additional damage. One role I failed to mention is that on the right and left side, you'll notice when you came in the room, there are four rooms, two on the right, two on the left. These are safe or clean rooms. Those will open up when you get to the very end of the encounter. Because what you'll notice is you'll see an effect on your screen and it'll say SIVA density critical. When you see that, the people on the right and left are gonna look to see which room is open very, very quickly. And then you'll go, you'll go like, like right front, right back, left front, left back. Everyone will collapse, run to that area as quickly as possible. To close those doors, you're actually going to have to shoot a little keypad that's within the room. Now, the key is if you don't do that in a certain amount of time, everyone wipes. So if you're running back and there's one person and they haven't made it, well, guess what? Shoot it and they'll die. You'll just have to res them. Keep in mind, in Destiny 1, you don't have tokens you have to worry about. In Destiny 2, when the raid comes back, that will be a consideration. But do that, the doors will close, you'll come out, and then you rinse and repeat. After that, it's just rinse and repeat. Continue doing it until you kill Vosik and end the encounter. The next encounter is the Siege Engine, or some people call it the Death Zamboni. And this is a very, very unique encounter within Destiny history. So to start the Siege Engine, you're gonna to have to run towards it a certain distance, and then ads will start showing up out of the ground. One thing to keep in mind, there is a special brick container in the back where you can get special. There's also a lot of ads that are going to be coming towards you, including the siege tank. One thing we like to do is not only can you get that, that special, which will allow you to do snipers and things like that, we typically want to have a titan that has a bubble that we can stand in if we get overwhelmed. And then a tether or two will actually help to get the enemies suppressed. You can shoot them, it'll drop orbs, but it'll control the battlefield. While you're doing that, you'll notice that the tank has, if you look in the center, has a center area and two turrets. Use snipers or scout rifles to take the turrets out, then the middle will open up, shoot the middle, you'll see it kind of explode a little bit. At that point, you'll be able to jump on top of the siege tank. Jump on the siege tank and then let it continue down. Just ride with it. It'll ride through the barrier and it'll continue going to where you need to go to. Once you get through the barrier, continue to move forward. There'll be ads to still work on, and you'll notice at the very end there's a fallen ship coming in and a bunch of enemies spawn at the bottom. One of the things that's really useful here is a tether once you get to that part because you can tether all the enemies. Kill all the enemies, and then you'll be able to get the engine parts. One thing to keep in note if you're playing this on hard mode is that you can shoot the cannons off of the fallen ship just like you can in GMs. And again, in hard mode, it's necessary. It's not necessary if you're playing this on normal. The weapon parts only allow you to carry them for 10 seconds and, until you become encumbered. Once you're encumbered, you can't pick up weapon parts again for another 10 seconds. So hypothetically, you could just have three people because there's three parts, just alternate that all the way down the field. The problem is there's some other roles, so you might want to kind of just designate some people just for that. Other roles you might want to think about is as you go through here, there'll be those little fallen mines that show up. You might want to have someone go forward and shoot those. Those are really annoying. And then you'll see a series of captains and there's going to be a really large captain you have to take up to actually get on the siege tank. So those two roles you might want to designate separately and have the other four people move the parts forward. A couple other pieces of advice is towards the sides, there are these arc areas on the very sides of the, of the hallway you're going down. Try not to die on that because if you die on that and they're trying to respawn you, they can die and then you can die when you respawn. So try to stay away from that. When you're moving the parts forward, try to time it so that if you're going across a chasm, so some areas, They'll have like a trough and they'll have like a little bridge over it. If you go over the bridge, make sure that you have enough time to get across it before the timer, because if you do it on the bridge, it'll roll off and that's going to be difficult for people to find. For the person who's eventually going to take Mexus, who's the larger captain, have that person continue to go forward. Usually I like to use a sword here and kill all the captains because those will allow you to continue to move forward in the encounter. Get towards the siege tank and then once you're at the siege tank to get the ramps to come down so you can put the parts in, you're gonna to need to kill Mexus. Mexus is the large captain that's on board the siege tank. Once you do that, the ramps will show, come down. Once the ramps are down, the people who are moving the parts forward will alternate. The, the way I look at it is you have the warhead, the engine block, and the drive shaft. The way I remember it, if you're coming to, if you're coming to the siege engine, I remember it as EWD. E is on the left, W's in the middle, drive shots on the right. That will let you understand where everything goes. While you're doing that and getting those in there, if you're running out of time, one thing you can do is that one person can actually sit in front. If you 
instead of if, uh, instead of facing towards the siege engine, if you're looking back towards where people are putting the parts in, you'll notice that there's a glowing object that keeps getting brighter and brighter there in the middle. If you shoot that and continue to shoot that, that actually will delay the white mechanic. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Do that, put all the pieces in, and you finish the siege encounter. Next, you'll get to Axis, and Axis is, it, it's an interesting encounter for Destiny 1 because many of the Destiny 1 raids, if you go back and do them now, not that they've been revamped in Destiny 2, they're kind of bland, right? The mechanics are pretty simple. It's pretty easy just to breeze through it. But Axis Phase 1 and Phase 2 are actually closer in, a, in composition to a Destiny 2 raid in that everyone has to play a role. You can't sit back and just not do anything. And if someone messes up on a roll, that's a potential to wipe the fire team. Now I will say the difference between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 is because you don't have to worry about tokens. You do have the opportunity to save encounters and actually do hero moments, which is one of the reasons I love, love, love this encounter because I've done that many times and so have people in my fire teams. Once you'll get in, Axis is kind of in the back and you can't do any damage to him. But again, same kind of concept as you had in the previous encounters. You'll have right, middle, and left. So you want three groups of two divided into those areas. The reason for this division is that there's going to be two roles on each side. There's going to be a cannon shooter and a bomb thrower. The key here is that if you're doing each, one, each of those roles, there'll be a timeout that doesn't let you flip to the other role. So it's very important that one person on each side, uh, one person in each area has that. Now, keep in mind, if things get jumbled, you need to do a hero moment. You may have to have someone, let's say, be a bomb thrower, go to a different area and throw bombs, or have a different person as a cannon go over and pick up the cannon and deal with the servitors on another side. First off, you'll kill a bunch of enemies. And after you kill a bunch of enemies, one of the things you're gonna notice is that servitors, first off, there's gonna be captains. Those captains, when you sh kill them, they're going to have basically each color each subclass color, whether it's void, solar, or arc. You'll also notice on each three sides, servitors will show up out of the walls and they'll be solar, arc, or void. Notice the trend here. The key here is that let's say the arc servitor comes out of the right side, but the, the, the actual cannon is on the left. Someone on the right side will call out arc right. The person who has the cannon who's on the left will go all the way across the map charge up his cannon and shoot the servitor once you do that it'll drop a bomb and that's where the bomb players come into play for this first phase the bomb people are actually going to shoot at targets that are beneath axis the first phase there'll be two the second phase will be three and the third phase will be seven and i'll tell you how i get that in a second since there's only three servitors the first time when you shoot the first two, again, one on right, one on left, you'll just need to make sure that you do that. And again, you'll have extra. You'll have one extra. So if you mess up, not a big deal. You go back to the middle, there'll be a bunch of ads that show up. One thing you can do with those ads is you can actually throw a tether down. You get a bunch of orbs and get your supers back from that. Then you'll go back to where you're at. Then you do the exact same thing. Again, the, art, the people with the cannons, you're gonna kill ads. The people with the cannons are going to go to wherever they need to go, shoot their respective servitor, and then it'll drop a ball. The ball people will then throw them at the boss. Not the boss, but at the area underneath. Again, they're little targets. And for each of those targets, again, the first time is two, this time will be three. So it's very important everyone hit theirs. For the final phase, there's gonna be waves of servitors. So you're gonna have to have people rotating around, having to pick the, the cannons up, rotating around to shoot them because there's gonna be a total of seven targets to shoot. And there's gonna be nine balls. So again, you have some room for error, but it's gonna be kind of hectic. And there's a timer on this. You need to be moving quickly. The difference here is before you had the three targets underneath axis, in this case, you're gonna have two additional targets that are gonna be a right and left. So to make this simple, because it can get a little chaotic, for the people on the right, always throw your bombs from the far side, like if you're on the right side, all the way to the right, if you're on the left side, all the way to the left first, because that allows you to work inwards and gives the person in the middle a little bit of leeway where they can kind of see where the gaps are. So again, continue doing that, shoot those targets, and when you're done, you finished phase one of Axis. Phase one of Axis kind of kind of warms you up. 
get you kind of the flavor of what the activity is going to be. But then Bungie takes it and cranks it up to 11. It gets a little bit more complicated. And this is the part of the fight where most people run into problems. This will actually be a DPS phase. So one of the things we recommend is if you haven't used Dark Drinker, because the boss, you'll be able to sword him. So again, this was, you know, before Destiny 1 where Lament and other things. And in Destiny 2, you know, maybe those things will come back. But Dark Drinker is what you'd like to use if possible. Also having at least one bubble. You can use Golden Gun here. A tether would help for, you know, for extra, you know, debuff and things like that. But again, those are some of the things you're going to want because this is a DPS phase. In this case, the team compositions are the same and some of the roles are the same. You're going to have bomb throwers and you're going to have the people who are shooting the cannons. One of the tricks here is that, again, you're gonna be killing ads. Axis is gonna be warping around the room. Now, one thing to keep in mind, don't get line of sight with him. If you have line of sight him, he's gonna try to throw nanites at you and those things can take you out quickly. So be very careful about that. But kill ads and then the captains come out and the same thing happens. Servitors come out and you're gonna be throwing bombs. When that occurs, Axis will go back to the middle so you don't need to worry about him there. But the other thing you're gonna know is when the captains come out, you're gonna notice a small little noise and you're going to notice people get a glowing effect on them. That's called empowering. And this is really, really important. This is where a lot of people get messed up. To do damage to Axis and to stop him from wiping you, you're going to need to make sure that you stun him. And to stun that, the only people who can do that are people who are empowered. Now, Axis can go to one of four areas. And I'll try to show a map here. It kind of shows it up. He has what's right and left, kind of a back area, and then what a lot of people call the pit. Now, obviously with the teams, it's hard to cover that with three empowered people. So what we typically do is we have, first off, if you have, you can potentially have people, because it's random, you can potentially have two people on the same side with empowerment. And that's why you need to call them out. So if you have two people on the right, then you'll know someone else is missing. Figure out what that one is, whether it's left or middle, have that person make sure they cover their area. Now, they don't need to cover their area yet. I'll tell you here in a second when they need to run and make sure they're in position. So you're going to pick up your balls. There'll be a total of three balls in this case. There's one right, there's one middle, there's one left. Call out when you're throwing your balls. In this case, you're throwing them at the boss. So throw your first one, throw your second one. Before you throw your third one, make sure everyone knows their empowerments and is in position. So again, you need someone on right and left and middle. Again, what I would suggest is the right and left people be set up, okay, where they can cover right and left. The middle person be set up not on where he's going to warp, but kind of, if you look at this map, right in front of where he'll warp if he goes to the back. And that way then the he'll be able to cover that area. And the right and left people, if for some reason it goes into the pit, which is that middle area down at the bottom, they can cover that. And the back person, because the timing is really, really, really short. And having three people cover four areas, this is about the only way most fire teams can do it. So again, get your people in position, then throw that last bomb. Then people are going to call out like, he's left, he's right, he's middle. Okay, and again, when you threw that bomb, make sure everyone is in position. If they need time, if they were on the right, covering right, and there were two people with the empowerments on the right, have them go ahead and left, give them, a few, give them a few seconds to run over there before you throw that last ball. But then you're gonna call it out. You're gonna say it's right, middle, or left. Someone is going to jump, the person with empowerment's gonna jump on his back, and then they're going to hit a button. It depends on what device that you're on, what the button is, and then you'll stun him. At that point, you can start to do DPS. Now, that's a short DPS phase. For anyone who's far away from him, don't bother going over to him. Just do DPS with snipers or whatever from where you're at. Everyone else, do whatever damage you have. Don't use your supers yet, but use Dark Drinker. Use whatever you have. Immediately after you start doing damage, the empowerment's going to reset. Now, you may be empowered again, okay? But you may not be empowered again. It may be switching to someone else. So you're very quickly, while you're doing damage, going to have to call out right, middle, and left. And if there's a gap, if there's two people on left, and there's no one on right, you're gonna to have to have someone call right. The very important thing is if you're doing DPS, the DPS phase is very short at the very beginning. So if you find out you're in empowerment, you have to cover some area, don't worry about two more DPS. Immediately run over and make sure you're in position where you need to be to be able to do the stun. If you don't do the stun, it initiates a wipe, which will shorten your overall DPS phase, which I'll explain in a second. Repeat this again. He's gonna to move to a different area. You call it where it is, you stun him, Empowerment to reset, you do damage. The third time he does this, this is the most important time because this is going to be the largest DPS phase. Once he do, does this, everyone converge to that area, put your bubble down, put your tether down, do your golden gun, put your grenades, get your dark drinker, and just go on a town on him, right? Because that is the largest phase you're going to have. 
Once that is complete, you'll notice that the white mechanic is coming up. You're like, what, what do I do? At this point, what you'll probably have noticed at the beginning is that there are four plates at the back. They're not really plates. They're like, they're like columns in the back, okay? The way we handle it is if you're looking at the boss, so let's say you're looking at the boss when you came in, turn around, okay? W the way I always do it is we always start from left to right. We don't call them out. You can make them numbers, whatever. We always just make sure, and just make sure as a fire team you're aligned on what it is, that we take the left one first, then we keep moving to the right, taking them subsequently. Because even if you're at the other part of the arena, you can get to it, no problem. You know, even if you're a slow, whatever character you are, even if you're slow, you should be able to make it over there. Once you're on there, then that actually, that the plates come down and you start over the phase again. The reason it's important to take the same one is because those four control your DPS phases. If you happen to jump on, let's say you jumped on all four, well, guess what? You don't have another protection area and you better get them in the next phase. So that's how they controlled in Rage. Instead of making it definitive phases, they gave you those four plus one more. So you have a total of five uh, damage phases. But again, it's important to get in them as quick as possible because sometimes the environments and things like that can make teams frustrated. I would say the frustration level can be similar to like Garden of Salvation or something like that where teams get stuck on multiple uh, damage phases and you have to have flawless timing with certain mechanics. And if you don't, that's where people can get frustrated and start making stupid mistakes. So getting them as, as few of DPS phases is really important. So continue to do that. Again, knocking down your servitors, throwing the balls, doing your empowerment, covering the plates. Do that a number of times. And of course, taking your, your white mechanic uh, column if you need it. Do that a number of times. And then he'll go in the back and do a final stand. This is as his, his health is getting lower. One thing is very important. You can't get up there with Dark Drinker. So try to keep snipers available or something that's long range. Try to keep a super available or two that you can take them out because that can mess you up. And that's very disappointing in starting this entire encounter over again. So make sure you do that. And then that's the encounter. Another kind of uh, thought too when you're doing DPS is if you keep the cannons, and I'm assuming this will happen to Destiny 2 also, you can use those to do damage the boss and they do a ton of damage. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Don't let those sit there. Go ahead and use that. For the actual servitors, the other key is don't let them get there. They'll, they'll start moving towards like these um, glowing panels in the floor. Don't let them get there. If they get there, that's another thing that initiates the white mechanic. And then the final thing I would say is just, you know, be flexible. You're going to have people die. So when people die and they're running a roll, just have someone cover them. Call it out. Say, I had this bomb or this can and I was covering this. And just, just you know, help them out. Because again... One of the things about this raid is it requires a lot of coordination. Everyone has to do a roll, and you can't really sit back and just do ad clear. So if you're expecting that going to this raid in Destiny 2, because I guarantee you they're going to add other things. They're going to add champions. They're going to add other modifiers, because we're significantly more powerful than we were in Destiny 1, right? They're definitely going to up the intensity. So when this raid comes out, expect a grueling day one encounter. Obviously, since we've done it before, will have an advantage, but Bungie knows that too. And with this being the, probably the one of the last reprised raids, I expect them to go out with a bang. That's the video, guys. Again, Wrath of the Machine is, is simply one of my favorite raids, if not my favorite raid in all of Destiny uh, 2 or 1. I would say probably at this point, maybe Last Wish is the only thing that maybe beats it. Um, but Wrath of the Machine definitely is in a league of its own. And for those who didn't get to play in Destiny 1, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys see in the encounters and how much you enjoy it so again that's the video if you like it feel free to like the video subscribe to my channel jump my discord and i'll see you guards in the tower